Good morning, Crossing Church. Will you stand? Let's worship together. Come on, sing this with me. Mercy every morning, rising like the dawn. God of all creation, the wonder of it all. And you're the song of freedom, and you're the only way. Every new beginning is by grace. Open life in Jesus, into a life of freedom. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Today, if it is your first time joining us, I want to invite you to find this card in the seat back pocket in front of you. And on the back, it's just got a few questions. You can fill it out with as much or as little information as you'd like. We would love to get connected with you because here at The Crossing, our mission is to help people know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. And when you fill this card out and you drop it off at the Connect Desk, that's the first step to helping us help you start right where you are. Well, I want to tell you with great enthusiasm and excitement that today is Baptism Sunday. Right? Okay, now here at the crossing, when we do Baptism Sunday, we like to celebrate and celebrate big, all right? Because baptism is the outward expression of that inward transformation. It's the public declaration that we are being made alive in Christ. So when that person goes into the water and when they come out, we want you to cheer like your favorite football team just won the Super Bowl, okay? You cheer like you have never cheered before. You let them know how excited you are that they are making that declaration today. Amen? I'm going to pray and then we're going to get started. Father, we thank you that we get to do this. We get to come together and celebrate. We get to be baptized and make the declaration that we are alive in Christ today. Father, we exalt you. We glorify you. We worship you in this place today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's get started. Ready? Come on, everybody, and let's praise God for these testimonies. All hands up. Come on, we sing. There is a river where goodness flows. There is a fountain that drowns sorrow. There is an ocean. Deeper than fear, the tide is rising, rising. There is a current stirring deep inside. It's overflowing from the heart of God, the flood of heaven, crashing over us. The tide is rising, rising.
in Christ today. Amen. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus.
on, can we just lift our hands and worship? Come on, the King is in the room today. His presence is here. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. That the Spirit of the Lord is here. Come on, that's it, church. Sing again, say. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. That the Spirit of the Lord is here. To overflow in this place. Feel our hearts feel your love as your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love. Your love surrounds us. Thank you, Father. Spirit of the living God, come love on this people now. Come touch. Come make contact, Father. Thank you, God. We honor you, Holy Spirit. We honor you, Spirit of the living God. Praise God. I'm going to ask our prayer teams to make your way over to the sides there. and over. We're going to continue to worship. And as we do, this is your opportunity to reach out and get whatever it is you need. Last week, we took this time while we worshiped, we let Basically, here's what we're doing. We're giving God some room to work. And as we were, were praying, we had uh, people touched and people healed. Uh, two shoulder injuries uh, touched. Uh, a rotator cuff healed. We had uh, relationships healed. Yeah. Genesis chapter 2 says that uh, over the chaos at creation, the chaos of of darkness and the earth was void and it wasn't shaped and it wasn't together but the Holy Spirit was hovering over all of this chaos and waiting on something and, and what the Holy Spirit of God was waiting on was the Word of God and when God said let there be light the power of the Holy Spirit put order separated uh, light from darkness and uh, dirt from water, and all of a sudden, what was in disorder by the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit descending, those things got set in order. Acts chapter 10, Peter was preaching, and it says the Holy Spirit fell while he was preaching. He was, if you will, hovering. And here's what we know. The Holy Spirit's in us, and he's around us, but there's a power that he's waiting to release based on your faith and the Word of God. And when we begin to worship, uh, the Holy Spirit, it, he's in this room. I, in fact, when I came in off of vacation, I came in here to pray every morning. I kind of look up because I, I, I want you to picture and realize the Spirit of the living God is in this room. And he's hovering, he's hovering, he's very aware of what's going on in your life. In any place there's chaos, chaos in your physical body. Something's not in right order. The Spirit of the Lord can fall and set that back in order, any physical condition. Anything in your mind, your heart, your situation, your marriage, your relationships, the Spirit of God, He is here and the atmosphere has changed. So as we worship, I want you to make your way out. If it, go get what you need from God. Take a step of faith and let the Holy Spirit bring the power to change. You, you, you're going to walk out of here changed by what happens here in these next few minutes. The Holy Spirit's moving. So we're going to continue to worship whatever you need from God. If you need physical healing, make your way out. Emotional healing, anything. Go get what you need, all right? Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. And thank you for your healing waters, your healing touch that's flowing in this room. Thank you for the, the restoration of souls that's flowing in this room now. Thank you for healing of relationship flowing in this room right now. By faith we receive. And Holy Spirit, I ask, as in chapter 2 of, of Genesis and chapter 10 of Acts, I pray, Holy Spirit, 
as you hover over this congregation, would you begin to fall in power and in miracles as we worship you now? In Jesus' name, praise God. Gang, go get prayed for. Go get what you need from God. your hands to heaven. We give it all to you, Jesus. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. Lord, I say across the church, the evidence. The evidence is all around. The Spirit of the Lord is here. I'll say overflow. Overflow in this place. Yeah. Fill our hearts with your love. Your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love. Your love surrounds us. Come on, if you just want more of God's presence, just lift your hands to heaven. We want more of your presence. When you walk in the room, you change everything, Jesus. You change everything you do. Come on, because we're going to sing this out. Just sing this, say, Spirit of God, fall fresh on us. We need your prayer. Come on, that's it, cross the church, say, your kingdom come. That's it. Fresh on us, we 
make us poor in spirit. Come on, just sing this again, say. A miracle can happen now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all The Spirit of the Lord. Come on, your miracle's in the house today. Just sing that to Jesus. Say it again, say. Miracle can have for the spirit of the Lord is spirit of the evidence is all around the evidence is all around that the spirit of the Lord is
we can do better. Come on, we can do better. Father, we love you. We thank you. Bless you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Wonderful, wonderful. God's in the room touching you. Listen, we're going to move from this point right now uh, of worship and of prayer, but God is moving all through this. At any time you need something from God, you can quit listening to me preaching just for a little bit, just for a little short period. Grab what you need from God. Uh, we're in a new series, but before we kick that off, why don't you turn to two or three or four people, give them a high five, uh, hug them or give them a $100 bills, and you can be seated. Thank you, brother. All right. All right, again, welcome to all of you. Welcome to everybody watching us here online. We came in uh, last week, and when I came off vacation, I thought, you know what, we want to shake our services up. I know many of you have come here for a long, long time, and, and we've got an order of service, and that, it's a good order. But for August, we're, we're just looking for opportunity to give God room. Yeah. Let's just give him some room. So uh, don't get uncomfortable that we're not following our normal, uh, you know, our normal pattern. We'll, we'll get back to it maybe. Uh, who knows? Uh, the main thing is, though, in a season like this, it's not as important that we have great church, perfected church, in other words, per perfectly performed church. It's far more important that, that we get contact with the living God. We believe that God is real. We believe the Holy Spirit is actually here. We believe the Word of God is actually living. And we believe that the times we live in have been prophesied, and there is actual information we need for this moment. And uh, we need it. And so uh, we've opened up our, our, our services a bit, so don't, don't be uncomfortable with uh, kind of the those kinds of changes. We're in a series called Get Ready. Everybody say, Get Ready. Get ready. What are we getting ready for? Uh, and that really is a, a bit of the question is we, we are, I believe God is, we are in a season, a, a kind of a strange season across this planet. And uh, I, I can't imagine that anybody is here that you can't sense that things have changed over the last several years and the world is in a hurry to get somewhere in a hurry. We just can't figure out where it's going. And I don't think the world knows either. But there are challenges in every country and across this land and it's a spiritual dynamic, it's financial dynamic, it's, it's a, 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 a everything dynamic, nature, all kinds of heat waves going on in Europe. Man, I saw some crazy things there. Here's the deal. The only one that knows what's next is our God. And when we talk about getting ready, uh, we're, this is down and serious now. I mean, there, I, I thank God for seasons of peace when we can come to church and talk about all kinds of things, and, and I don't think we should be casual, but we can get casual in times of great blessing and great peace. You just kind of naturally relax. One of the good things about a, a season like we've entered is that it's a bit chaotic. It's got everybody a little unnerved, and except for maybe the most proud who just keep trying to define what is happening, uh, I think the people of God are recognizing the world is in over its head and we need to humble ourselves a bit, let our knees drop and say, God, we don't know what's going on, but we know you do, and we're going to press in and find you. And so this series, the Revival Nights, it is all about us uh, really getting before God and making a contact and getting some direction for the fall, Christmas, January, these, this is where our head is. If Jesus comes back in September, praise the Lord, game over. But if our theologies are, I want to, can I bump that just for a second? <laughs> uh, you know I wouldn't get too far before I was already off my notes. Uh, but, uh, gang, I, I, want, I want you to hear this, and this may disturb some of you. I believe my, there, there are three different sort of version, main versions that, that different brilliant godly men and women interpret the Scripture as to how Jesus is going to come back and uh, set this earth in order. Here's what I want you to know. That is going to happen. Jesus is going to come back and straighten this thing out. One version is, and it's the version you'll hear most often here, is that Jesus is going to come and rapture his church out. He's going to take us out of this, and then, and then a calamity is going to come upon this earth, a wrath of God, unlike anything the world has ever seen. 
There are other interpretations. There, there are men and women, and I say this not to confuse you, but I got a point in this. There are other interpretations, brilliantly built by some very godly, brilliant theologians, that some of the tribulation period has already happened and that Jesus, is, there is no catching away, that Jesus is just coming and going to set this thing in order. My, I, 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 I'm a believer in a catching away. But hear me, I hold that loosely, and I've always, when I've come to end time teachings, told you, hold your eschatology a bit loosely. Don't get so caught up in the details of how you've defined that. We put our trust not in how we've defined Scripture. We put our trust in the one who's, who's already built the plan. In other words, I might have it wrong, but I'm still not shaken. If, if how I believe it's going to shake out doesn't happen, my faith isn't in that. My faith is, is, is in the one who, dev, who has already decided what the plan is. It's already the best plan. It's his plan. And whether I believe it, have interpreted it right or incorrect, it doesn't matter. It's still the best way. It's his way. And he is who I have my trust in. And as we are moving into this time, and, and, and it's, I love to talk about eschatology. Jesus is going to catch us away or he's not. Uh, fantastic. Ultimately, your faith is in the one who has the plan in his hand, yes. and I, I promise you, however he's going to shake it out, 666 branded on your head or not, or what, whatever it's going to shake out, the plan is, is trustworthy because he's trustworthy, yes. and our faith and our rest is in God who holds this whole thing, all right? So as we are moving in, uh, that's, where our heart, that's where we're pressing. We're pressing to know, God, what are you saying to us in this moment we're standing in? How do we get ready for that? All right, before I move into uh, Hebrews chapter 10, and while y'all are turning to that, and I would encourage you, bring your Bibles. Get comfortable with your Bibles, uh, your, your notepads, your, your iPhones, whatever, bring them. And I know you got your phone with you. And uh, you, you'd, you'd do without food before you, your phone, so uh, I get it. So, uh, but, but listen, learn to get around in, in the Scripture because, you know, we're going to gather together and, and read the Bible, but you need to know how to get around in the Bible for yourselves. And uh, that, that's important. I want to I say a big uh, thank you to all the guys. We had about 90 guys show up here yesterday, had a big time of breakfast. Uh, God's presence was here. There was joy in the house. Pastor Reggie, I know, brought a great work. Can we just honor the men and all the guys that, that were there? Let's just appreciate so much. It's important we gather together in smaller groups, smaller groups, bigger. Just get together, get together, get together. Uh, very important, and especially in the times that we're in. Don't forsake the gathering of yourselves to gather. Last week, if you missed that message, just go back and, go back and look at it. Uh, I don't have time to really rehearse it today. Uh, but go back and look at it. It'll help set some context for the season we're in and while we're in this particular series. Our message today is endurance training by faith. Endurance training by faith. How many of you understand the Holy Spirit he, a great comparison to the Holy Spirit is he's a trainer. He's here to train us for the life that we're created for. Do you see that? He's called a paraclete, comes along beside. means he's got a pair of cleats for you to wear. And uh, what a trainer does is on, on, on one week, he's got you lifting, say, whatever, 50 pounds. He's got you benching 50 pounds. And you get real comfortable with that, doing a bunch of rep, but you come back the next week and the trainer doesn't say, hey, let's keep lifting 50. What does the trainer say? It's going to 60 and we're going to double the reps. And the next week the trainer comes back and says, we're going to 100 and we're going to push it as many times as we can. And if he's training you for endurance, he's saying, hey, we're going to run a mile today, but the next week the trainer says, we're pushing it. Again, what I'm saying to you is what the Holy Spirit does in our life is I know we want peace, and peace meaning no more tensions. But without tension, you don't get stronger. Uh, one, of the, one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to call you in to a little heavier lift so that you get stronger, so that you're capable to endure what's coming next. And so if you understand that's a part of how it works, some of the things we're going through start to make a little more sense those of us that came to Christ because somebody preached and said, God's going to make all your problems going to go away, and everybody's going to love you, and all your bills are going to get paid, and it's just going to be awesome. Uh, they were lying. Uh, the truth is, yes, your eternity is set, but you're still going to have a bunch of problems, and a lot of times he's not going to save you from them. He's going to save you through them. 
This season out in front of us is a save through. So uh, let's, let's, let's keep digging in here. He- Hebrews chapter 10 uh, says this, verse 35 says, do not therefore fling away your fearless confidence. Everybody say fearless confidence. Right, and I, I refer to this a lot, but, but don't, don't lose your Clint Eastwood eyes, those of you that are old enough to know who Clint Eastwood is. You know what I'm saying? As a Christian, we need to, we need to look like we know what we believe uh, because there's a bunch of chaos out here, and especially during this time, the Scripture said there's going to be a great falling away under the duress that we're in right now, and there is. At the Crossing Church, there isn't. Uh, no, nobody's getting off the boat. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push you and a bunch of other great churches. But uh, you, you, you need to make up your mind right now. You're going to have fearless confidence, but, but it, it doesn't just happen. It's not bequeathed to you. For it carries great and glorious compensation of reward, verse 36. You have need of steadfast patience and endurance. You have need of patience and endurance to bear up under difficult circumstances without compromising so that you may perform and fully accomplish the will of God and thus receive and carry away what is promised. In other words, God has a call on your life, the will of God for your life, but it doesn't just happen. For that to be fully accomplished, you're going to need faith and patience, and you're going to need fearless confidence. But we're going to get it. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, For still in a little while... Uh, the coming one will come. Jesus is going to come, and he won't delay. So the plan is still on, but the just, those saved, shall live by faith. And if he, the just one, draws back and shrinks in fear, my soul has no delight or pleasure in him. This is God speaking. But our way is not like those who draw back to eternal misery and are utterly destroyed. We are of those who believe and by faith, preserve the soul. All right, so there's a whole lot there, whole lot there. Um, everybody say, be patient. Point number one that I'm taking from this is, be patient, God is near. Be patient, God is near. In the coming days, there's, going, there's chaos. We're under chaos right now. We want it to go away. Most of it isn't going to go away. God's going to save us through us. You're going to need to have confidence, and to have confidence in God, you're going to have to learn patience. I, I found a, a guys back in the back there. Y- y'all pull up that, that college thing from Psychology Today. I found an article in an old message I did and, and from Psychology Today talking about uh, the current anxiety of college students, and this was a 2015 article, so it's, it's worse and worse and worse. And it was talking about, and I'll just read a piece of it too, talking about the current students. It says, for increasing numbers of students all across the United States, for them, disappointment now balloons into distress and thoughts of suicide, lacking any means of emotion regulation and generationally bred on the immediacy of having needs met they have no middle psychic ground. Now, obviously, you've got to take this law, and this whole article's fairly uh, brilliant, but the last sentence there says, mere frustration catapults them into crisis. Uh, break that down for you. Basically, these, these aren't believers. These are just psychological analysis of colleges around our country, watching how the culture has changed and how college, and their thing was a study of college students, just saying there's so many more that are suicidal and dealing with deep anxiety. And, and through studying all of these colleges, what they found out is that they don't have a psychic middle anymore. What, what does that mean? That means they go from happy to crisis with, with just a little bit of tension. They go from happy to suicidal, the middle ground, the, the ability to, pro, they're so, we're as a culture are so used to, we, we want it now. We want it yesterday. I prayed on Monday. It was supposed to be here Tuesday. It's not, ah. Oh! And culturally, there's, so, there's just such a sense that, that we, if it's not, if it doesn't exist and I don't have it, it's, it's all or nothing. The idea of having, and they say this in the article, a 3.2 GPA, but wanting a 4.0 
the mindset of anxiety was this. I have a 3.2. Why don't I have a 4.0? Crisis. Instead of saying, okay, I have a 3.2. I have to work middle ground. I have to work and have patience and grow. It's not I'm either this or that. It's no, you grow into things. And in the biblical interpretation would be this. We have need of patience, psychic middle ground. Not psychic. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, middle ground, psychological middle ground. With, with this kind of pressure, and, and here's what I'm saying. Anxiety is just up and up and up right now. And a part of what we need is just plain old patience. This scripture says, by, by faith and patience, you have need of faith and patience. All right. Uh, Tuesday morning, I get here, and uh, I, I am full of faith. Stacy and I, coming out of vacation, have had some oppositions and some things, not between us, but just some, some things. How many of you have been married 150 years, and you know sometimes outside forces happen, and it, you kind of deal with opposition? Well, this a thing. So a thing. Everybody say a thing. Hey. All right. So uh, so we started pushing back against it in prayer, and and uh, I came here Tuesday and just said, "Man, we're going to pray faith. We're going to speak faith. Faith, faith, faith." My Tuesday morning devotional was just that was fantastic. It's good, and uh, man, so I'm I'm like, yeah, God is and God will and this and this and this, and uh, that was good till about two. And uh, this is going to be extremely real for you today. About 2 o'clock, my mother calls, my, my aging mother, and I, I'm the sole caretaker for my mother and have been really for the last about seven years, but uh, specific since my dad passed. But uh, the last three years, she's been uh, up in our area, and I've moved her uh, several times. Anyway, long story short, um, I, here, here's the thing. I, I can care for her uh, financial things. We've got that you know, I, got, I manage that. Her legal stuff, got her trust, that, that's all set. Uh, I moved her from one place and then moved her to a place that was a better place. That's done. Uh, I can do so many things that are in my control. But uh, she's got dementia, and uh, the Lord hadn't interrupted that. It is what it is. Uh, and I've certainly asked him to. But that's, that's growing. That's growing. It's, it's going in a, in a different direction. And... Uh, She's lonely, and uh, she's lonely because my dad's gone, her sister's gone, m my sister's gone. She's lonely because all the people that she grew up with, they're all gone. Anyway, here's the deal. She, she I feel like it's my job to fix whatever is happening. And for the last couple of years, I'm just frustrated because there's things. She looks at me with these eyes begging me, Randy, move me from this place. Randy, do something. And I don't know what to do. I can fix so many things with a little bit of money and a little bit of time, but there's certain things I can't fix. And Tuesday, she was in an especially bad episode. And she just, my precious mother is looking at me with these eyes and this posture of do something, do something. And all I knew to do is to grab her and pull her in. She weighs all of 90 pounds. I pulled her in, and I just began to pray over her. When I did, she just collapsed and started to cry. Man, I prayed the paint off the walls and the Holy Ghost in the room, tried to catch something on fire. Did everything I knew to do. And yet when I, I let her go and started to leave, she followed me. And just, I mean, the, what I left to was this face saying, do something. And I said, Mom, are you going to be okay? She said, No. Anyway, it's been a couple of years of me praying about this. And stay with me because you're going to be disappointed in me for in the next eight seconds. Because uh, I get in my car and uh, I, I, I don't know if you, I get in my car and instead of saying, Lord, please help us thou me, I was mad. I'm like, Lord, where the heck are you? Uh, it's two years. I can't fix that. My, and I'm saying things like this, like I need to explain these things to the Lord. Lord, that's a press, that's my mom. And I've done everything I know to do. And I'm asking, I can't fix her dementia. I can't fix her paranoia. I can't fix her loneliness. God, where are you? And it just, I was having a moment. Everybody say a moment. moment. Have you ever had a moment? I mean, it's like I'm periodically losing it. And I'm frustrated. And uh, it's got me. 
It's just got me. So I'm driving home, um, and on the way home, it's not getting any better. It, I'm getting madder. And uh, so I walk in and to have some time with Stacy Witter, and to beat all, Joel Osteen comes on television in the Yankee Stadium. And I should have received from him because he's probably the best encourager on the planet. But he starts encouraging. Put a smile on your face. Just <laughs> thank the Lord. And man, the God is good, and it's going to go well for you. And, I'll, and the more he talked, and I lo- listen, don't, don't beat Joel up. I don't, I, it was me that was sick. It wasn't Joel. Joel was doing what Joel does, you know, encouraging all of Yankee Stadium was happy. But the more he talked, the matter I got. I just thought, but the cynicism. I mean, have some of you been in church so long that you get cynical quick? I went from mad to cynical, like, oh, stop it. Just sit down and stop it. And uh, watching the worship, and instead of worshiping, and I said, oh, y'all sit down. And uh, this is terrible. That was awful. Like, Stacy, turn that TV. Get that off of there. I can't sleep with that encouraging Jesus stuff going on. And I go to bed just kind of soured like that. Is that too real for you? And uh, so Tuesday morning started better than Wednesday morning. Wednesday, I get up to come up here to pray. Uh, come to pray. Normally, I pace and worship and thank God for the day. And I even sometimes say, Lord, how's your day going? And I just have a great time with the Lord. Not Wednesday. Wednesday, I sit right there where Montre is. Went and got my coffee. And uh, I was pouting. I, I mean, I, I couldn't, I, I didn't say a word. I just sat there thinking, I know I'm supposed to worship. I don't feel like it. I'm mad. I should pray. I, I can't be honest. I'm mad. I just, I'm not liking this. This is a lot of pressure for two years. I need a break. <laughs> I'm being a big baby, but I mean, it's just being real. I got my Bible. I got my Bible uh, on my, my lap. Just sitting right there. Gang, I've sat in this uh, place 23 years. I, I got probably thousands of hours logged praying in here in the mornings uh, with my Bible open. And the AC unit, there's a vent right there that blows hard enough to actually make it to here. The AC unit kicked on, and when it did, my pages rustled, which in 23 years has never happened. And they landed, and listen, while they were rustling, this other testimony went through my mind. The other, only other time this has happened, I was in Roatan with my wife on vacation, and I was in the exact same mental posture. Y'all stand with me? I, agitated with God and a bit cynical. And I'd gone out on the porch to pray in Roatan, and this, this situation was about my son. My son had some, just some, 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 some unique things going on with him that frustrated his spiritual life and our relationship and all kinds of things. Precious, precious guy, but just had an issue. And when I went out to pray, what was happening honestly in me was, why my son? I didn't say that because it sounds like my son's better than anybody else. He, he's not, but he is my son. I'm thinking, I'm a godly man. We've raised him this way. Why my son having to deal with this and all the issues that that brings up? And I wasn't saying it. I was just thinking it. But I was frustrated. And a breeze blew off the the gulf there. And both my journal and my Bible went and landed. And I looked down. Now, these are just my thoughts. I looked down at my journal. And it's a prayer that I had written at the first of the year. Over, over him, exactly what I was thinking. And I looked at my Bible, and it, was, it landed on Jeremiah 31, and the words read, stop weeping over your children. Could be a hint. Stop <laughs> weeping over your children. They will return from the enemy. Your children will return to their home territory. That, that's what Jeremiah 31 said. And I knew that God was attentive, not even to my prayer, to my thoughts. Yes. And so when those pages turned, I thought, could it be, I mean, I really, I was cynical. I was thinking, 
No. And so when they landed, I looked down to see the words, you have need of patience and endurance. Yes. Uh, although maybe. <laughs> no, in a, in a second, it was Hebrews 10. In a second, the, in a second, I realized God's attentiveness to my heart and my condition. He wasn't mad at me for being a big baby. He wasn't mad at me for pouting. Uh, gang, we, we have moments, and, and you have them. And it's a part of this faith walk. And what I'm wanting you to, to walk away with today is not that faith makes you walk perfectly and have no problems, and you beat the enemy within seconds every single time. I'm wanting you to say there's an enduring faith that goes through things and feels cruddy and feels defeated and goes through long seasons of feeling cruddy sometimes and defeated. What faith does is it doesn't make cruddy go away. Faith causes you to stand in the middle of cruddy, and sometimes when you get knocked down, faith says, doggone it, I'm getting back up. It causes you to get back up and stand in faith. What we're, gonna, what we're going through now, the, the reason there's gonna be a falling away is there's gonna be people that don't understand it's okay to have a bad day. It's okay to doubt. It's okay to, okay to say, God, where the heck are you? Lord, I thought you said. I thought I understood. All of God is a big God. He's not a childish, insecure, thin-skinned, Western-cultured person. He can handle reality. Thank God. And if faith can't handle reality, I mean, if it's just some kind of Christian feel good something, I don't, I've got, I'm out. But I'm here to tell you that our God, one, is extremely attentive to what's going on in our lives, and he knows what we need. I also want you to know that you and I are gonna have to learn patience. A part of what faith is, is knowing from the time you get the promise and the time it comes, here's the thing, even the things I'm praying about my son, I might not live to see them, but here's, here's what happened. When I saw it, in, when God brought his word to bear and let me know, I know what you're thinking, I know what your pressures are, here's the word for you. At that point, it's game over. It's game over. I'm telling you, I, I've given that situation to God. It's not resolved. It's not resolved. Now here, it's not resolved by these eyes. It's not resolved in the natural, but it's resolved. And here's the thing, when I read through all of Hebrews chapter 11, and those, you get familiar with your Bible, Hebrews chapter 11 is a bunch of guys that by faith went after a promise. Yes. Most of them never saw what they were going after. They died before they reached it. Now that, again, is not necessarily the way faith has been taught, and, and I'm about seeing results. But sometimes without seeing results, you believe, and you go after, and you stand. And there are things you're going to get to see, and there are things you're going to die on your way. The point is be on your way. Yes. Faith is an on-your-way walk. Now, hear me. There's some men and women in this room that God brought you here to this place, and you've been under a duress for a long time, and it's got you questioning. More than anything, here's the word I, I believe, it's making you want to quit. The temptation to quit is going to be so loud and so strong Quit God, quit the church, quit the ministry, quit serving, quit loving, quit giving, quit, quit. Just had it with it. This doesn't work. It doesn't work. Hear me. It's not an it. It's a him. And he is faithful. And maybe our techniques don't work and our mechanics don't get you. I mean, patience, patience means this. Uh, the reason we need, what, what is patience? Patience is not just waiting, you know. That's not patience. Patience is, is coming to a resolve like I have with, with my son. Lord, you've spoken. I'm off the clock. Patience means no longer is this about, here's the thing about God. He rarely does things when you think he should. Again, when you're an eternal being, 
he doesn't even have a clock. He doesn't even have a watch. It's like, do you even know what day it is? I mean, when you're eternal, what do you need it for? It, once God says something's done, it's not about what day it's going to be done on. Yeah. It's done. Yes. Where I have to get, and, and, where, and what I got Wednesday morning on my mom's situation. This, this is one of, fill this, put this into your life with the situations you face. But it was just about going, Lord, all right. I wish you would do this this week. That would be very helpful. But you've got this. I still don't know what to do. I still don't know how to fix what's broken. But Lord, you said, you've got this. Randy, don't throw away your fearless confidence because your mom's unhappy. That's no reason to throw away your fearless confidence. So, everybody good so far? Uh, I'll skip that, I'll skip that. Understand this, those of you that are under long times of duress, does anybody get this? Does anybody relate? Uh, you're under pressures and things, and you got doubts, and you got things stirring, and you're going, doggone it, man, when does this kick in? I get you. I feel you. And uh, I don't think there's anybody in here that doesn't, doesn't get that. Uh, my next point is this. If he doesn't remove that pressure or that tension, then he's going to use it. This goes back to the Holy Spirit, the trainer. I want to pray and have him take it away. Sometimes we pray, and we say, God, take this away, and he says, No. No. Wait a minute. I've got your word on this. I've got this. And this and I listen to all my teaching. And this, this, this. You, you're, I pray. You do. That's, isn't that the deal? A lot of times the thing is, no, you pray. I answer sometimes yes, sometimes no. Paul, this is in 2 Corinthians. Paul came to, to God. How many think Paul probably knew how to pray? Yes. Right? Didn't need a class on faith. Paul knew how to pray. Paul said, to keep me from getting a big head, a spirit was given me. Spirit was given me. And uh, a thorn in my flesh is how he turned. A thorn in my flesh, bugging me. And three times I prayed to God. God, take this evil spirit away from me. Does that not seem like a lay down prayer? Bad spirit, good spirit, good spirit, make bad spirit, exit. That's a lay down. That's a lay down. That, that'll preach every which way from Tuesday, every time. And then we get this weird, God said, nah, nah. Paul, you got this. You got this. Because my grace is sufficient. I want you to draw on my grace that you already have, not something new. Draw on what you already have. Go deeper with that. Know that it's sufficient to ward off this issue and the weakness that it's causing, it's actually strength that I'm going to use later. You're going to need the strength later. So when I say to you, when we're under duress, sometimes what God hasn't taken away, it's because it's got purpose. What you got to fight is the resentment of having to go through it. Can I make a statement and just don't hate me, but we're all a bunch of babies. <laughs> We want life to just be easy, and it isn't. And again, we've been on a cruise ship. We've got to get back to our warship mentality. You're going to feel this. But a part of it is God making warriors out of us. And a part of how we get ready is we've got to trust the Holy Spirit. When he makes something easy, dance. Rarely will he do that. Most of the time, he's going to create muscle in you that you need. If he doesn't, if he doesn't remove it, he's going to use it. Point number two or three, I don't know which point this is. Scripture says, by faith we preserve the soul, but our way is not like those who draw back. In other words, you don't quit or are utterly destroyed, but we are those who believe in Jesus Christ the Messiah and by faith preserve the soul. By faith we preserve our soul. Our soul is where all the worry and the stress and the bad day and the I hate them your soul is where all that is. Now, when you're a person of faith, and, and I used to think it this way, you're either a person of faith or a person of fear or a first person of discouragement or a person of depression. Let me ask you a question. Was Elijah a man of faith or was he a man of depression? Because we see them both. Yes is the right answer. Yes. 
Here's, here's what you need to understand. In our soul, let me hear all the men say, I'm a man of faith. Oh, please. You're worrying me. Come on, fellas. I'm a man of faith. All my ladies say, I'm a woman of faith. Not bad. Here's the deal. We can think because we're people of faith and we look at our soul. This says we, we, we heal our soul. We maintain our, preserve our soul by faith. Well, I'm a man of faith. God has given to every person in here a measure of faith. I'm a man of faith, but faith isn't the only house on the block. Your soul is a neighborhood. It's a neighborhood. And we want faith to dominate the block, but right across the street is fear. Loud, noisy, partying neighbors of fear. By them, depression. You know, by them, old wounds, old unsettled wounds. By them, anger. Pastor, I'm saved. I'm full of faith. Well, hallelujah. You're full of something. Uh, you, you're, you're <laughs> I hope you're full of faith. But here's what I want you to know. Depending on what day it is, those neighbors in your neighbor, those neighbors in the neighborhood. Listen, everybody in here, as saved and filled with the Holy Ghost as you are, you deal with fear at some level. You deal with depression at some level. You deal with anger at some level. And these other neighbors in your soul are like, you know, your your Vinny, your cousin from Boston. Cousin from Boston, that beer commercial. <laughs> that comes over and just dominates the party. And depending on what you read on the internet that day or who you talked to or what your child or what your husband or what your wife said to you, that kind of depends on who's running the neighborhood. Yeah. And the point is, in a given week, just everybody's going to try to run the neighborhood. The point isn't for it to, you to live by faith perfectly. The point is, get the... Get your crazy cousin Vinny out. Know how to get rid of that and get back into faith, how to get back up. Uh, this week, me, Pastor Randy, godly, holy, oh, Lord, so holy. Uh, so, so I get over my, my sort of discouragement visit, got back up on my feet. Got, it, got a word from God, got, got, got the bully on the block again. Faith is the bully on the block. In a good way. I make it to Friday. Anger came over to the house. And we had dinner. <laughs> I was in the gym and uh, began a conversation with another man of God, another Christian. He and I have had, uh, over some history, we've had a way of rattling each other's chain. And... Uh, and we've exchanged words before. This is a good man. He wins more people to Jesus than anybody. Now he just talks to everybody and anybody. But for whatever reason, he and I rub each other the wrong way at times. <sighs> well, we start a conversation, and it went from three to a six to an eight. And both of us, anger is, is rising. We're in a gym, two godly men in a, in a room full of ungodly men. And, man, I started to lose it. I, I started coming a little, I'm come, coming unglued. And we're freeing up the hands. <laughs> and, uh, no, we are in the gym and saying things to each other. I, I hadn't said to you, I, I don't think I've ever said to anyone. We, we, we're not good. And he, he's saying them back. And here we are, we, I mean, you're starting to, we're taking steps toward each other the head, the whole thing, and saying, what are we going to do now? I mean, we were doing, what are we going to do now? I mean, angry. I just hadn't been that mad in a long time. And he was mad, <laughs> bowing up. And, uh, and basically, we, we turned and walked with words that sounded something like this. We're not speaking. We're not, that's it. We're done. And, man, I head back to the back of the, the gym where the big boys work out. And... <laughs> Man, I had a tremendous workout. It was fantastic. I was so mad. I was grabbing, waiting, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I would start thinking about 
He said that, he said, I was right, and he was wrong. Right. And I'm working out in Florida now, and I think, oh my God, I'm so tired. <laughs> uh, and my mind is just racing on all this stuff. And uh, for about 15 minutes, I was just seething. And I could feel, about that time I look over and feel, there's mirrors there so I could see the Holy Spirit in the mirror. Like this. And I felt stupid. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Burned all the gas out of that anger and I thought, this is the, the most embarrassing thing. Two godly men in a gym full of ungodly men and the two guys that can't get along are the two Christians. <laughs> That's a scary picture. I, I what in the world? Go to the car, call him, left him a, a message, voicemail. He didn't pick up. And said, that was stupid. I, I apologize for being so defensive, uh, whatever. Hour or two pass, and I sent him a text, say, hey, check your voicemail. I just want to let you know. Uh, I'm so embarrassed that two men of God stood up in a gym. Men, and we talked to all these guys, and the two guys that should be representing the best. We're dividing over the things I've preached. Divide over whether Jesus is the Son of God or not, or the Bible is inerrant, or the Holy Spirit present, or God creator. We don't agree on that. We can butt heads a little bit. But over politics and all the current events going on and whose fault is it and how to, don't divide over them. I've preached to y'all do that. And he and I are in here making this stupid volcano, just being stupid. And got out of hand. Anger came over to Faith House and I had a meltdown. But here's, so here's the good news. I didn't stay down. And I'm sorry. I apologize to all of y'all for being stupid. Gosh, I was so angry. But here's the deal. Bible says you get to be angry until sundown. I think that's what it says. <laughs> Before 4 o'clock. Before 4 o'clock, two godly men who acted stupid apologized. Got, got right side, got it, got it fixed. He and I are not ever going to agree on a whole bunch of things. But here's the great news. We don't have to. We agree on Jesus. We agree on the Word of God. We agree that Jesus comes back. We agree on what we agree on. And that's enough. Here, gang, here's my whole point. Faith isn't walking this out perfectly. And don't follow my pattern. I've had a horrible week. I just, I'm gonna, it's going to be better this week. My sermon next week will be fantastic. I've been stupid this week several times. Uh, but here, here's the thing. I, I'm not quitting. No, no matter how bad a week I have or how stupid I act, or here's the thing. You can momentarily get out of, out of sync. When you read Hebrews 11 and try to look for, for Mr. Perfect, the, the, the heroes of faith, you're hard-pressed to find them. Joseph, maybe, but I, he's got issues. They just didn't write about him. But David, the murderer, adulterer, man of faith, you know, Moses was, was a man of faith. Abraham, the liar, throw his wife under the bus twice, man of faith. Faith is not about working this thing out perfectly. It's about get back up. What the scripture says is, and I'll, 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 I'll close it with this. Bottom line is this, don't quit. It says the just will live by, by faith, if he draws back and shrinks back in fear, my soul has no delight or pleasure in him. Here's, here's, in other words, if you quit, God's soul, his own soul, has no pleasure in us when we shrink back. All this opposition that I've described and a thousand other ways that opposition comes to us, the ultimate goal of opposition is to make you quit on God and to quit your ministry and to quit on this relationship. Yeah because there's some cruddy times where things are not going to go the way you want to go. Do not quit. Amen. Faith is not about walking it perfectly or always having a great attitude, but it is about get your legs back down. Correct, correct, correct. Just when the Holy Spirit says, hey, you, you were stupid, get back up and do this, do it. Pick up the phone, make the awkward phone call, follow the scripture, let, let Jesus be the captain. But faith, faith is about get back up, get your legs back under you and go, not going to be discouraged. God, your word is true. 
I was angry, said stupid stuff, Lord, forgive me, but look, I'm not going to sit here and cry about it. Lord, I was tempted in my mind, had all kinds of thoughts. Lord, forgive me. Get back up and keep going. Yes. This endurance, this endurance race that we're going to need going, going forward, you're going to be challenged every which way from Tuesday, and you're going to need to know you have permission to have a bad moment, but you can't stay down and you cannot quit. Amen. If God does, has no pleasure in a soul that quits, the opposite of that is his soul has great pleasure for us when we're sitting under duress and strain and a cruddy period saying, Lord, this I'm not happy, this is difficult, but I'm going to stay faithful. God's heart is lit up over you. I want to encourage you. Stay the course. Stay the course. God is still God. The plan is still on. He's still faithful, and he's given you what you need to endure whatever it is we're going to face. You hear me? All right, let's stand to our feet. Stay out of the gym. <laughs> Throw that in there, too. Father, in the name of Jesus, we welcome you, and Lord, for every uh, weakened heart, and Lord, for, for those that are in long stress, Lord, th there are hands that hang down, the Scripture says, weak knees, those that have been carrying a heavy load for a long time. Lord, God, let this morning be a breath of just fresh air, that thing inside of us that goes, me too, me too. I've had a struggle, but okay, I've heard God, Holy Spirit, come and speak. Lord, let the mind that thought they have been abandoned and forgotten, let them know you're attentive. Even when they're not praying, you know what they're thinking. Let them be encouraged. Lord, for the discouraged, let them be encouraged and let them be lifted. And for any and everybody in this room that has not yet come to faith, has not said, Jesus, I give you my life. Lord, I believe you've brought people into this room today for that very reason, so that they can be saved their sin forgiven, and they can come into the family of God. And as the scripture says, be one of the just that live by faith. So, Father, with that, Lord, we all bow our heads. If you're here today, we're going to all pray a prayer together. If you've never given your life to God and accepted Jesus Christ, that's what salvation is. That's why these folks got baptized. Today is your day. And here's the thing. I could try to talk you into it. But the Holy Spirit's already been dealing with your heart, even during this message. And so trust that pulling, that is the Holy Spirit calling you to God. That's what you've been missing. That's the holy homesickness that you've had in your gut. Something's just not right. That's God pulling on you. Today's your day of salvation. Heads bowed, eyes closed, we'll all pray it together. You mean this in your heart, and today you will be for eternity saved. Hallelujah. Praying after me. Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner and I've sinned against you. I'm fully responsible. Please forgive me. I believe Jesus Christ lived for me and bled for me and died for me to pay for my sin so that I could be saved. And I believe you raised him from the dead. And I received Jesus Christ as my Savior, as my Redeemer, as my Lord. Fill me with your Spirit. Fill me with faith. I surrender. I'm all yours. Thank you for saving me. Heads bowed and eyes closed. If you just prayed that prayer, would you boldly be proud of this moment? Would you boldly lift your hand and say, I've given my life to Christ? Across this room. Praise God. Hands, hands, hands. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Praise God. Praise God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless these that have given their life to Christ this day. And I thank you, God, for all you're going to accomplish and that their next steps, Lord, will be directed by you. Thank you, God, for this starting today, though. In Jesus' name, we bless them and seal this moment. In Jesus' name, Father, thank you. Amen. 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 Christine. Yeah. Amen. Wow, wasn't that such a powerful faith-building message today? So, so good. Hey, I want to tell you, if you did give your life to the Lord today, whether you raised your hand or you didn't, I want to encourage you to grab that Connect card that's in front of you. And on the back, you'll see a little section that said, I said 
yes. If you'll just check that and drop it off at the Connect desk that's in the lobby, we have a gift we wanna give you. It's a book called Jesus Is, and it just helps you figure out how to start navigating this life with Christ, who Jesus is, and it'll help you get started right where you are. And don't forget, if it is your first time joining us, or maybe you've been coming for a little while and you haven't filled one of these out, make sure you do that too and drop it off at the Connect desk so that we can help you start right where you are in this journey with Christ. Well, let me tell you about a few things going on real quick, then I'll pray and dismiss you. But I wanted to let you know, it is life group season coming up here at The Crossing. And if you've ever thought about leading a life group, this is the time to sign up. And a life group can be all kinds of things. It can be a Bible study or a book study. But it can also be something like a mom's hangout group, or it can be a volleyball team or something like that. A life group is just a place where you can be connected in life giving community with other believers. Isn't that awesome? So if you want to lead a group this coming fall, you can register right now on our website. And the other thing I wanna tell you about is that revival nights are coming up at the end of August. Anybody excited about revival nights? Yes, if you went to Revival Nights in January, you know just how powerful these nights of prayer and worship can be. The last Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of August, we're gonna have Revival Nights here at The Crossing. Doors will open at six for prayer, and there will be childcare provided, but it's not just daycare, okay? This is not just where they're putting a movie in front of your kids or something. They're having Revival Nights over in kids' church, okay? So you're not the only ones that are gonna be encountered in Christ, they're gonna be meeting with Jesus over there too, okay? So we would love to see you there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the last Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of August. We would love for you to join us. Well, let me pray over your tithes and offerings and then you'll be dismissed. Father, we thank you for what you are doing in and through everybody who's here. Father, thank you we get to do life with you, Father. Thank you for this faith building word. And I pray as we go about our week, Lord, as we are encountering discouragement or difficulties or just things that are, might be a disappointment to us, Lord, that you would remind us of this word, remind us that we need perseverance, remind us to build endurance of faith. And Father, for everybody who is giving and tithes and offerings today, Lord, thank you. You are the God of blessing. You are the God of abundance. Thank you that your word says every good and perfect gift comes from you and from you your hands. So today, Lord, we give back to you that which you have given to us. Father, thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, we love you. We honor you. We bless you in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all have a great Sunday. We'll see you next week.